Physics Bites, a science podcast in English by the students of Notre-Dame. Hello and welcome to a new episode of Physics Bites, our English language physics podcast here at Notre-Dame de Sion in Paris. We are here again for a new episode with our junior students who are working on their carbon emissions project. We've had a couple of groups go already, and this time we have uh, a group working on agriculture. So they're going to talk to us about the carbon footprint of the agricultural se uh, sector, and they're going to give us some ways where we can reduce our carbon footprint. Uh, I also have two co-hosts, but let's uh, meet the group. Do you guys want to introduce yourselves? Hi, I'm Marguerite. So we have Marguerite. Hello, my name is Lily. We have Lily. Hello, my name is Marion. Marion, and? Hi, I'm Emma. And we have Emma. And my two co-hosts today are? Hello, my name is Noé. Noé, and? Hello, my name is Anastasia. And Anastasia, who are in two other groups, which you will have or may have already listened to. All right, so let's get started and get right into it. Uh, how about you guys give us a short summary of the, like an overview of the impact that the agricultural sector has on humanity's carbon footprint. And then we'll get into some more specific questions once you guys have laid out the, the outline. So, Marion? So, we have divided the subject into uh, three uh, main parts. Mm -hmm. uh, we first have uh, livestock. Uh, livestock... Uh, contributes uh, to uh, 80% of methane emissions in the agricultural field because of uh, the ruminant animals and their digestive system. Uh, Just so uh, we are clear, we even though our project is carbon emissions, uh, we also consider all greenhouse gases. And yes. I remember you guys were talking about methane being about 20 to 40 times more powerful than carbon when it comes to uh, the absorption of infrared, which is why um, we are going to talk a lot about methane in this uh, agriculture group, whereas usually we only talk about carbon, right? Yes. So, I'll let you continue. So, uh, the enteric fermentation uh, is the digestive system uh, of, this, uh, of those animals, uh, accounts for uh, most of the methane emissions in this field. Uh, And uh, also, there is the digestive system of the animal, but there is also the processing of those animals. Uh, What do you mean by processing of these animals? I mean the meat industry, when okay. you uh, kill the animal and then uh, process the meat right, to sell to it. Sell it. So just so uh, we're also clear, What are? Do you have an idea which are the animals that mostly we're talking about in terms of like the biggest percentage are which animals? Uh, it's ruminant animals. Right, so uh, on top is uh, beef. Right. So cows. Yes. Uh, okay. There is uh, then uh, sheep. Uh, they can they contribute, but the most important one is uh, cows. Is cows. So like that's a very very huge percentage of the overall. Uh, methane that's produced coming from livestock is coming just from cows because they are big producers of meat methane and also the main form of meat that we eat. Yes. Okay, so keep on going. So, uh, we, in processing, uh, the cows are also the uh, much more polluting animal because uh, if we compare uh, the, uh, the source, the global uh, imprint of uh, 100 grams of protein coming from right. different animals. Uh, beef comes off top because if you, pro if you produce uh, 100 grams of beef meat... Coming from a cow. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that's 50 kilograms of CO2. Right. So to produce 100 grams of beef from a cow, it's 50 kilograms of carbon emissions. Yes. Or equivalent of carbon emissions. Yes. Right. Okay. So... Uh, The, the meat industry has uh, significant environmental consequences, but there is also uh, manure management. Right. So uh, manure being the remains of the digestion that yes. is not uh, 
negligible. Because uh, most of the time is it is stored under anaerobic conditions, producing a lot. What is of anaerobic methane. conditions? What do we it, mean? Uh, it's when it's fermenting without air. Without oxygen, specifically oxygen, in the yes. air. Right? And so, why is that important to mention? Uh, because that's a significant part that could be reduced easily if we change the conditions of uh, storage. Of okay, and why is anaerobic uh, fermentation not good when it comes to these carbon emissions? Because it produces uh, methane and other um, CHG gases. Right, so if I understand correctly, you're saying that if we store uh, waste coming from our livestock differently, we would instantly reduce a good portion of the methane being emitted. Yeah, that's not that's a small part, right. but that's still any small still, part yeah. is important. Okay, that's interesting. So uh, the second part of our uh, presentation was on uh, agriculture itself. Right. So maybe so, Lily, you're going to take the relay here. Yes, I was in charge of the agriculture part. Mm -hmm. So we said that uh, three factors contribute to the greenhouse gases emissions. The first one is uh, the use of pesticides and and chemical fertilizers, right. uh, which releases a lot of uh, carbon and more specifically black carbon. Is this the production of these things that produces a lot of carbon, uh, or the, the usage use, of it? The okay. use of them. Uh, then Can you give us maybe a bit of details of why it produces carbon or how it produces this black carbon? When we use uh, on plants the pesticides, mm -hmm. then uh, it evaporates in the air, okay. and even some uh, of the particles are really uh, taken by the wind. Right, so they're dispersed, dispersed uh, all over the place and it goes everywhere. And stay in the air. Okay, okay, interesting. Uh, and the second factor is uh, crop burning. So right. it's when we burn uh, all the crop residues on an agriculture area, which releases a lot of... Uh, and why do we do this? To reduce this to make the land more fertile. Right, uh, so we have remains, faster. we've already done our harvest yes. and there's lots of... Uh, uh, organic material that remains, we burn it so that it can go back into the soil and make it uh, more fertile, but the burning is going to be obviously reduce, uh, emitting carbon because yes. of combustion. Okay. And then there are uh, the feed production uh, because uh, when we transform uh, the crops into feed production, it pollutes a lot. So feed production being like what we give our livestock? Yes. Okay. So a portion of our agriculture is used to feed the livestock and you're saying that this this transformation is very carbon yes, emitting. Yes, and it's even more a problem since uh, most of the parts of agriculture is for feed production. Oh, really? Yes. So most of the agriculture products is not used to feed ourselves, it's used to feed the animals that we eat? Yes. So there's a problem there, right? Because then we're making, instead of eating the, the, the these uh, agriculture products ourselves, we're adding an extra step in there, which is very much polluting. Is that yes. uh, sort of the problem? Is okay. I get a feeling where we're going to go towards at the end of this when we're looking for solutions. But uh, well, we'll save the surprise for the end, maybe. Uh, okay. So, uh, what else did you guys talk about in your uh, description of? Uh, um, the agriculture sector. We talked uh, also of deforestation and the wood industry uh, because uh, between uh, two, uh, thousand, uh, 28, uh, 20, sorry, 15 and 2020, uh, the earth uh, lost um, uh, 10 million hectares of forest every year. Right. But uh, in uh, the process of uh, tree cutting, we distinguish two, uh, two ways and two uh, objectives. Right. The first is the wood industry in itself. Uh, which uh, produces 13% uh, of the global carbon emission each year. And, in agri uh, within the agricultural uh, No, in the global... Uh, really? Like overall carbon emissions from all of humanity, 13% comes from the wood industry? Oh, no, sorry. I, I'm sorry, yes. Uh, I, I think it's 13% of, of the agriculture, yes, the agricultural sorry, yes. footprint. Okay, and okay. Uh, the, uh, the, the, the objective is uh, to use uh, this wood uh, after and uh, the other uh, objective is deforestation, when uh, forests are cut to uh, grow or to do uh, some, uh, something else. So like to use the land for other things than just a forest being yes. there. And often this land is being used to... Uh, to crop or to... Right. Uh, for agriculture, uh, yes. livestock. Okay. So we're reducing our forests 
in order to have more agricultural lands. Yes. And we're also reducing it so we can use the wood for various things, buildings, stuff. Okay. And uh, so uh, we don't we have a different uh, pr- uh, problems to that uh, with carbon emissions. First, uh, it that uh, forests uh, in uh, on Earth are uh, carbon sinks, right. so they can s- uh, absorb carbon that human or nature produces. And this absorption is through photosynthesis. Yes. So they're taking the carbon and they're producing other stuff. So it's reducing. Yes. A big uh, portion. Okay. So uh, when uh, the the carbon cycle is uh, is uh, at an, a normal uh, rate, uh, it works. But uh, now, uh, one million trees are planted every year, but uh, around 50 billion trees are cut. So uh, our carbon storage decreases uh, very drastically. And uh, the second um, problem is that uh, so, uh, sometimes uh, when cr- uh, trees are cut. We burn them uh, for that, and it releases a lot of carbon emissions. So it's doubly bad because not only are we reducing our capacity to absorb carbon yes. in the process of reducing our bis- this capacity, we're also emitting carbon. Yes. So it's like twice as bad. Okay. And uh, scientists revealed that uh, 1.83 kilograms of carbon dioxide released is equal of uh, one uh, kilogram of wood burn. So when a, a, a wood burn, it releases way more, uh, uh, way more rich uh, carbon. And we know this is the case because wood, like most plant material, is very rich in carbon. So when we burn it, yes. we're actually releasing all this carbon, which is naturally in uh, plant materials. And uh, the main drivers of, uh, uh, as we said, uh, are uh, beef production with uh, 41% of uh, the global deforestation, but also... Hold on. Uh, 41% of the reason we uh, cut trees is to make land for cows, basically. Yes. Wow, okay. So we need to rethink our way to eat uh, meat. I, I, I think that's where we're going. Yes. <laughs> And also uh, old seeds and uh, and uh, and soybeans. So uh, mm. when we we say yes, we need to uh, eat more uh, more soybean to reduce our meat consumption. Uh, we also uh, pol- uh, pollute and uh, emit carbon emission because it represents eighty point four percent of the global deforestation. So is it more polluting or less polluting soybean that would? S- be replacing, for example, beef? I think it's uh, more uh, polluting, but uh, we are eating less. So for now, it's okay. more polluting beef. Okay, okay. All right. Uh, so that was like the three main axes of uh, your description of the problem. Emma, can you talk to us about the, the part that you were working on? Yes, <clears throat> my part is about the solutions that uh, can be uh, the answers to all these issues that we okay. talked about. And so I uh, I present uh, I presented uh, three different uh, I presented three different parts. Okay. And so the first one will be biological farming, that is a new way of farming that has the purpose to be eco-friendly with, for example, uh, the uh, reducing the use of different chemicals. Right. Or, right. So it's uh, more of a sustainable form of yes. agriculture, which is balanced with all the factors which are important for the environment chemically biologically physically economics. okay yes uh, then uh, there are the solutions for livestock more right. precisely with uh, the main part is nutrition right uh, the the need to change our nutrition okay uh, to reduce the carbon emissions in agriculture and uh, I also presented in different levels the, for example the farm level the industry level and also the consumer right, level right right and finally I um, presented uh, alternative energies that could be used instead of uh, fossil energies okay. in agriculture. So uh, if we can maybe focus less on that because there's another group working on energies and we focus more on the first two aspects. Um, do you want to maybe give us a few details about uh, some of the different solutions when it comes to livestock to begin with? Um, well, there is there isn't really something we can do in a large scale. Right. We can do other than with, stop eating yes, meat. We can <laughs> change our nutrition right. uh, with uh, eating less meat or eat fake meat. Meat. Right. That, I think we're going to well, come back to that maybe yes, later because that's one of the interesting uh, mm-hmm. solutions. But uh, do you have any sort of numbers or ideas about how much of an impact just the fact 
of eating less beef would have on the carbon footprint of agriculture? Is it something that we should consider or is it just a small difference? Uh, well, I think in, uh, um, in global, in, in general, the uh, carbon footprint of fake meat is 30% lower than real meat Right. in general. Uh, and keeping in mind that fake meats are still very, very rare and we don't have a way of producing it at a big scale. Uh, okay. And when you were talking about the, the other aspect of having a more sustainable agriculture, what are some solutions that you found? Uh, the when you're talking about uh, the question of uh, like different use of chemicals, less chemical stuff like this. Yes. Uh, the, well, for example, using less uh, chemicals. Mm -hmm. uh, there is also a way of um, managing the decay of uh, the organic materials. Right, the so waste. That, yes, the okay. waste so that it can't uh, damage the soil so that we can... Uh, okay, so I think we've done a pretty decent summary of the various axes, axes of uh, your topic. Is there anything you guys want to mention about what you guys presented that we didn't go over before we move on to the questions? Have we pretty much gone over most of the important points? Yes, I think. Okay, so maybe we can go on to the questions. I'm going to turn to my uh, co-host here. Maybe we can start with Anastasia. Do you have okay. uh, a question maybe for uh, your yeah, classmates? Yeah, I do indeed. Um, what are the two top changes needed uh, in your opinion? Right, so let's go straight to how we can fix the problem. If you had to propose two solutions for having the biggest impact, what would they be in your opinion? Uh, so maybe we can start with Marguerite and then we go to Marion. Uh, as we already said, but I think uh, we need to reduce our meat consumption. It's uh, the obvious, the more obvious uh, point. Okay. And uh, replacing, uh, maybe not only by soybean, but right. uh, also working on finding um, in uh, in our already uh, the alimentation uh, we already use right. as uh, sources of uh, protein. Right. Uh, like so that's the question, right? Because the reason we eat so much meat is because we need protein for our survival. Yes. And the idea isn't to just stop eating proteins because we're not going to survive. It's to how can we replace the protein which is coming mainly from beef by other sources of protein without just replacing all of beef with just one other thing, right? So what are some possibilities yeah. that you guys maybe came know. across other than like, you know, there are already like lots of plants that have... Uh, mm -hmm. Yes. What is the main problem with soy, first of all? Why is it so polluting? Because uh, the way we uh, we need to burn a forest in a particular uh, way that uh, releases a lot of uh, carbon emission. Okay, and yes. if I'm not mistaken, I think it uses a lot of water as well. Yes. It's yes. very yes. water so, intensive, yeah. and, but then again, so is like cows, right? They need a lot of water. Okay, uh, so one solution is to become a vegetarian, apparently, <laughs> but we keep hearing that from everywhere. Yes. Uh, another solution, Marion, what were you going to suggest? Not necessarily becoming a vegetarian, but just reducing uh, our meat consumption like two times a week and not every day could make a difference uh, worldwide, mm -hmm. but it's so very... So you're more for a modified approach, so let's not just go from eating meat to no meat from yes. one day to the other, but let's start by reducing it. Even reducing it for you has a big enough impact that we should consider it. Yes, because uh, eating meat is... Uh, is one of the main parts of a lot of people's diet right. so we can't just tell them oh no you have to stop eating meat no it won't be a really uh, good plan because n not everyone will be agreeing to it without getting too political is eating a lot of meat something that is specific to the richer countries and more developed countries or no uh, a lot of uh, richest country I mean if you take like France USA Australia it's uh, most of the let's say the, the richest countries yes. Europe North America uh, the consumptions uh, per person per year is over 100 kilos okay. but uh, yeah I mean, a lot of other countries like Argentina are eating between 80 to right. 100 kilo as well. It's not necessarily uh, 
all of the richest countries. But there is a sort of correlation, right? There is a yes. correlation. The richer peoples are, the more they tend to consume. Well, they can meat. afford meat. Right. Yes. Because meat is more expensive in yes. general as a form of diet, mm -hmm. as a dietary supplement. Than okay. So let's let's. Um, so your idea was to reduce instead of just sort of cutting it off. Yes. Any other solutions? that go into like impactful solutions which are not necessarily just related to meat. Uh, did you want to did you have something Emma? Uh, well not really there isn't something we can do really in a big scale we can reduce on our uh, consumption of meat obviously. Uh, and it is the main problem. Okay. So it, it is logical that we are focusing on that. Okay. Like, it is true that not only is it using a lot of water, it is using it, producing a lot of carbon, but also the methane problem is actually a big problem. Yes. And methane is not such a big problem when it comes to other aspects of agriculture, which is not necessarily livestock and specifically cows, right? Yes. I okay. think uh, yeah. we could also uh, work with uh, the laws and the politics to uh, help, uh, like it's a really, a really a, a current topic, it's mm. like agriculture, uh, to become more and more bi biological, but we see uh, every day that it's complicated. But I think it's the main uh, focus. Uh, see, uh, uh, also, we need to uh, make on the on the years to come to uh, tra uh, transition. Yeah, to transition to just yes. a more sustainable model of yes. agriculture. And maybe uh, 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 come to a, a, a more slow and a more uh, respectful agriculture, but uh, we will uh, need to change uh, our entire way of conception and it yes. will be difficult. And there would be also uh, a need for uh, support from the governments and things yes. like that. There has to be political will behind things and because the, the governments are the organisms that have the biggest amount of power in terms of money, infrastructure to make, I think to we, make a change. We need to find a balance between uh, individual uh, gestures and uh, like uh, effort that uh, every citizen uh, do, but also uh, the um, the laws and the politics that uh, are uh, taken by uh, the government. I think it's uh, two uh, ways to work, and they sure. are really. Uh, there can never be just one yes. party that does it. Everybody has to do their part, right? So yes. individuals can eat less meat. And governments can also, for example, impose laws that yes. force agriculture to be more. Is there a risk of? Not being able to feed all of humanity, it will make things too controlled and too regulated. Is that a danger or not really? If we reduce our meat consumption, it will reduce the need for for meat at yeah. at its base. We will um, <coughs> need less animals and, uh, and less space. That the less space. Take, yes. So. It will be uh, more space and more uh, productions that could be... Um, uh, uh, so if I understand correctly, you're saying that the idea isn't to reduce, it's to transfer. Like, yes. like to reduce this part and use all the money and space and resources to do other kinds of agriculture which are less carbon uh, intensive and also can still feed humanity. Yes, because it could be a more easeful solution than just remodeling everything okay okay so i think noah you had a question uh, that you wanted to ask from the group uh yeah so i i had a question but it's not all about uh, meat or uh, meat consumption it's more about uh the energy production is that someone said that solar panels are efficient on a short scale hmm. but why not on a large one so uh, yeah at one point you guys talked about uh, i remember emma uh, the use of solar panels in an agricultural setting. So okay. go on. Yes, because uh, the problem with uh, uh, green energy, such as uh, solar energy with solar panels, it that it's that it can't produce enough energy yeah. to be really efficient in a larger scale. Plus, it uh, can solar panels uh, only work with. Uh, um, with precise uh, ge geographic conditions. Right, you can't do it in yeah. like, you know, maybe more northern countries where you don't have light which is as energy rich and also as available as you would have in like an equatorial country. 
Uh, I think that's a general problem with the solar photovoltaic energy is that it's not a very dense form of energy as we as we say in physics. Um, okay, uh, Anastasia, do you have another question? Uh, I do about meat. Uh, okay. How does meat uh, is a very hot topic today? Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Uh, how does fake meat work uh, in CO2 Good emissions? What is fake meat? How well, do we produce fake meat? Fake meat First. is crafted from plant-based uh, ingredients as, such as uh, soy, peas, wheat and other uh, protein divides from it's like the veggie burgers that we uh, <laughs> we buy so that we can feel good about ourselves. Yeah, for okay. example. <laughs> and so these ingredients are uh, processed and combined and we use uh, flavors to uh, try to mimic the texture and the taste of real meat. It depends, but it's not really uh, a good uh, resemblance. You have not found that please the, you enough to, to, to be convinced. No, I'm not really convinced. <laughs> so, uh, fake meat is better than real meat in terms of CO2 emissions because it's uh, more resource efficient mm -hmm. because you don't ray you don't produce um, food for an animal that you're going to right. raise then slaughter you just produce the food at its base um, there is also uh, there isn't the waste the transport there is right. less transportation and, and things like that there is also less uh, land space used uh, to, because uh, we're producing this like a, in an industrial way uh, yeah. in factories. Yeah. Can you talk to us also about fake meat in the sense of like actually producing real meat but without an animal in a laboratory setting? It is uh, a project mm -hmm. that is being uh, researched on. Uh, it has you can grow mm -hmm. fake meat, but not at a, a good, big scale. Industrial scale. Yeah, you can't. You just produce uh, 10 grams uh, like that. In the, so it could be a solution, mm -hmm. but if we uh, manage to uh, adapt it to a more industrial production without, um, without it being polluting as much. Right. I, I guess the same sort of reasoning would apply in that because you are growing it in a laboratory setting, yes. you're not using uh, feed, you're not using space, you don't have to like, you know, keep it alive for many months or many years. Okay. Uh, and I guess the unsaid part of all this also, there's an ethics that goes with it, right? Yes, the also. idea of um, growing, raising animals just in order to kill them and the, also the way we do this at an industrial scale has in the recent years at least become very yes. uh, uh, badly seen uh, you know farms with like millions of chickens in there or like you know pigs that are just in very unethical conditions so that's also a, an added bonus if we move away from sort of meat and beef and pork yeah I think, so uh, it's uh, Marguerite, uh, you were gonna mention and, something. And I think that uh, people that uh, say that we can't reduce our meat uh, consumption, it's false because we know that uh, at the time of our uh, grandparents, mm -hmm. uh, they ate uh, three times less meat yep. uh, that, than us. So it's it's not uh, unreasonable. We did it. Uh, but humanity doesn't yes. eat five days a week of meat so for we, most of its history. We can do it again. So. I think uh, we can be optimistic on that because it's already uh, has been done. Um, okay, okay. Uh, Noé, I think you had a question. Yeah, so uh, does biomass not represent a source of carbon because we are burning stuff ne uh, nevertheless? Right, so uh, biomass was one of the things that was brought yes. up when you were talking about the energy, different sources of energy. And the question being that, okay, biomass is supposed to be less have less of a carbon footprint because it is uh, organic material that's already d available. You don't have to go dig for it like oil or gas or something like that, but burning it still will produce carbon, right? So, Emma. Yes, and that is the problem because uh, biomass, since it is uh, burning or the, the base of biomass energy is burning organic materials, mm -hmm. so it will release... It is combustion, yeah. right? So it will release carbon in the atmosphere. So it is not the perfect solution, but for now, it's the it's 
is the best better we have. than going it's, through it's oil the best and gas. we have and we can't we don't have a, a perfect energy that can re replace all fossil energy without producing any carbon but um, biomass is the one that uh, is the closest okay it is so it's not an ideal solution but there are worse solutions so let's yes. choose lesser of uh, the lesser evil um, Anastasia, do you have any other questions that you um, found of interest? Well, um, can you maybe explain how people were doing before pesticides? Mm. Maybe. Uh, actually, uh, humankind have always used pesticides. In ancient Greece, in uh, 1000 before BC, uh, farmers used sulfur. Mm -hmm. uh, then in the Middle Age, we actually used uh, tobacco. And then in the 19th century and uh, 20th century and today, we just developed uh, chemical fertilizers. Right. I guess the difference being that the, the first pesticides we were using before were more natural, so they're more easily reintegrated into uh, an ecosystem, whereas in the 20th century we're producing chemicals that never existed before, which have much stronger consequences. and we have learned that it's not always good ones. And also the fact that it comes back into our own uh, diet is not very good either. Um, do you have any other questions left, guys? Uh, no, yes, so uh, what is the difference between land use and crops and agriculture? Uh, right, there's a, there's, there's a lot of terminology. Land use, crops, crops and, agriculture. and agriculture. So yeah, We should have asked this question maybe at the beginning where we were putting together our or a summary. So uh, the land use is just no, no, no. Uh, the term used to describe the human use of land mm -hmm. where we develop an economic activity. Okay. So it concerns uh, agriculture, agricultural activities and uh, even residential activity and okay. industrial ones. Uh, the crops are just uh, cultivated plants uh, we use to provide uh, food for humans and mm -hmm. animals. And uh, agriculture is the science or practice of farming. Okay, okay. Um, well, I think we've uh, gone over most of the stuff that you guys brought up. It's uh, it's a very interesting topic, obviously, because it's so closely related to our own survival. Agriculture, food is, is one of our most basic needs. Uh, and it's interesting to see how much something that is so necessary for survival is also bad for our survival the way we're doing it, right? Uh, if, if we had time, we could go into a lot more details, I think, about what could be sustainable agriculture, sustainable livestock management and stuff, but that's, people do year, uh, months and months of uh, schoolwork and research and thesis on that, so I think what you guys brought up was very interesting. If I take one lesson, I think from all this, is that we need to start eating less meat, right? <laughs> that's the one thing we should keep in mind. One way, yes. Yeah. Th that's well, the most uh, accessible uh, And effective uh, yes. way. Uh, I think the other question I would have um, been curious to know about is like, what is the role of technology in all this, right? Because there's one way of looking at things where technology can give solutions for problems. Yes. And another way of looking at this is, well, I think if we look for a technological solution, we don't change our behavior. But changing our behavior is what is more necessary, maybe, yes. with a problem like this. Do you guys have an opinion on this yourselves? Um, yeah, maybe Marguerite? I think that uh, in the field of agriculture, uh, we saw that uh, in the past we did uh, things uh, more respectfully and I think the past is, uh, can be a great argument in this mm -hmm. and that uh, maybe it's not uh, 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 the help of uh, technology that we need, mm -hmm. it's more uh, the return uh, uh, of um, like a decent and of uh, uh, how do we uh, say sober? But sober, being sober, more sober like, about yes, this, being we more. Think, uh, sober, I yeah. think we need to uh, uh, think of the sobriety that we need to achieve more than uh, the technology that we can use. Right, so you're more for going back to an old fashioned way of yes. doing things which was more in sync with the way yes. nature should work. But, I, I get the impression that maybe your group mates have a, a different uh, yeah. take on this. I, I disagree with Margaret because um, being an agriculture is. A very um, 
complicated job and uh, there is technologies yes. that are in place today that could help them with just like a mod monitoring water levels or yes, the plants are doing or the livestock are doing so i think it's just small techni uh, technological yes, things agree, that yeah. could yeah. help yes. them so i don't think we return uh, in the middle age but i think <laughs> we uh, don't need to Uh, yes, we. I think we need to improve uh, science, science, science and uh, researches, but we don't need to produce more technology which will um, uh, more um, uh, humanize something that's natural. I, think. I guess so, so. The idea being that uh, it depends on the kind of technology and what yes, the yes. use of it is, right? If the idea is because in a way, when the, the first human used a cow to plow the land instead of using his hands, that's using technology, right? He's He's used more power than he physically had, and using a mill is technology, right? The question becomes, I mean, what is the technology and what is the end goal of it, right? This is great. We're having a debate within the group. This is this is this, is, this makes for good podcasting. Um, any final comments, maybe before we end this uh, long session here? Uh, what did each of you guys take away from this? It was there stuff that you learned that you were completely unaware of before. Uh, Has it helped you? I don't know. Maybe change your behavior. Are you eating less meat? Uh, are you doing something different? Well, I don't know. The, the impact on you guys, the research you did on this topic. Well, uh, I didn't realize how much meat was polluting, actually, yeah. even if uh, a lot of people are talking about it. And uh, I'm a big meat lover okay. myself, but I am trying to... Oh, you eat. are from Auvergne, and there's a lot of meat yes. there, right? So. <laughs> so, but I am trying to eat... Uh, less meats because I know that it's a small um, thing from from me but it's uh, it has a, a huge impact. Okay, have you tried to convince maybe your parents also to eat less meat or something like that? I am trying. But How's that going? <laughs> uh, it's going well, I okay. think. They're open to the idea. Yeah. Okay. All right. I think there is a lot of culture and like generational things to go with it. And then the other. I didn't realize uh, how much uh, it, uh, wood industry uh, was polluting. Yeah. And as, uh, when we uh, when we think of the wood, we think it's uh, natural, is the solution to save all our problems about uh, climate change. But mm -hmm. not even nature pollutes himself herself. Yep. So uh, we, uh, I was, I, I ended up more confused than I was before. <laughs> Okay. Well, nature is yeah, the, the nature, but but nature finds its own balance in yes. a way, right? And we're the ones coming in here and changing that balance in a way. Uh, Emma, Lily, did you guys have any final uh, thoughts? Well, me, Emma? I I didn't realize realize that there isn't a perfect solution to uh, all this for now. That yeah. maybe it will. There's no magic will, magical uh, act or choice we can make that would fix the problem. We can do little things like right. changing our behavior, but there is something big. So then the goal shouldn't be to get rid of the problem. The goal would be to sort of reduce it bit by bit and hope to find that balance somewhere. In some way, yes. Okay. Uh, Lily, did you have any final thoughts to uh, close up the episode? I was just fascinated to know how much agriculture contributes to... Uh, Global emissions. Global emissions, yeah, yes. Yeah. And uh, I didn't know. We always say, oh, pesticides are bad for health, yeah. but we never say, oh, it's bad for our environment. So it's right. as to us. As so bad you, you, you were us. able to see a much more wide vision of the impact of agriculture yes. on every aspect of nature. Right? And I really think it's interesting because, uh, as Margaret said, we need to find more sober. A way to do agriculture, but today we are eight billions. Well, maybe 50 years ago we were only two to right. three billions. Right, and that's billions. the one thing I wanted to yes, bring up when Margaret was talking about so the older way of doing things was that before we had a much smaller human yes. population, and then 20th century it exploded. Right, so that's one of the reasons. Maybe at the same time we are producing more food than we eat and we need. So. It's good that we have the capacity, but we don't need to be at full capacity. But then that goes to a question of economic choices and economic models. All right. So the topic was so interesting. And I think we can have this discussion for hours, but we're going to stop here. Thank you very much for the great presentation you guys did. Your classmates found it very interesting as well. Thank you very much. And Thank you. Thank you. So that is it for Physics Bites this week. But before we say goodbye, it's your turn to think about the question of the week. And this week, the question for you is, would you be willing to stop eating meat knowing how much it would reduce the carbon footprint 
of our agricultural industry. So, we're looking forward to hearing from you in the comments section. In the meantime, thank you for listening. Don't forget to subscribe to the podcast. Leave a notification. Tell your friends about it. Give us a review and a good rating. And tell us how much you enjoy Physics Bite. Until next time.